and we'd like to get started right now with news you can use. Canary in the mineshaft, currently in an idiom, but previously an accident. Let me explain. Going back hundreds of years, uh, there's always been mining below ground, typically for coal, uh, sometimes for ferrous metals and things like that. But miners, historically, for years and years, had one big problem. And it was below ground is a big repository for methane gas. So miners would go down to mine coal and methane is a, you can't see it, you can't smell it. It, it is a very dangerous thing. It will cause death within minutes, uh, sometimes just a minute or two. And many times miners would go down and they would end up dying of methane poisoning. They had no way to know what was going on. But what somebody discovered in 1911 is they could take a cage of canaries down there. And if a canary, somebody was in charge of watching the canary cage, if a canary keeled over and looked sick or died, that was the signal to run to get out of the mine as quickly as possible. It ended up saving lots and lots and lots of lives. Um, and it became known as the canary in the mine shaft. And we use it today as an allegory uh, that indicates something that happens before something bigger that could be even worse happening. So in the housing business, we've had over the years a number of canaries in the mine shaft, as it were, that related to events prior to a change in the housing business. One of the biggest changes that we had was during 2008 to 12, when we had the Great Recession and we had this meltdown in terms of numbers of homes that got foreclosed on, fell into default and got foreclosed on. Now, back in that day and age, uh, the canaries in the mine shaft, the things that we saw in 2006 and 7 that happened previous to the default rates increasing on homes. Keep in mind that generally people will miss a home payment last. They'll miss all the other payments in their life, cars, credit cards, uh, power bills, those kind of things first before they don't make their house payment. And that's typically because you know people don't want to be homeless. So uh, what we used to see back in the early 2000s were things like credit card bills. Uh, they used to have department store credit cards. These kinds of things would go, this would be the canary in the mine shaft back then. If, if we could look and find out for people who were behind on their Capital One payment, for example, we knew that within 90 days or 120 days that they'd be starting to fall behind on their house payment. Uh, in the last 15 years or so, that has switched over to, uh, even up to recently, as to the power bills. So the electric and gas company bills um, have not been getting paid for the last 15 years as a precursor, canary in a mine shaft, to uh, uh, the house payment being missed, the first default state of the uh, housing business, the foreclosure process. Um, and, and that's somewhat because of the way the society's treated those kinds of bills and the government. They basically have said, listen, you can't, turn off power on people and let them starve to death in the heat, cold, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so that had been the thing. Now, in the last year or so, that has changed again. And there's a new canary in the mine shaft. And today, and, and, and once again, it's because governments across the United States, especially in blue states, are primarily uh, forbidding that process of just cutting off somebody's power. But what is now replacing that as the new canary in the mine shaft is exactly what we're seeing going on today. And it is the default rate in car loans. Automobile loans, automobiles have been expensive for the last two, three years. First, there was a semiconductor shortage as a result of COVID and no shipping, nothing coming over from China. Um, and then there was a backlog and prices increased and then inflation hit. Uh, there was a shortage of used cars. Any, anyway, people who bought cars in the last two to three years are defaulting right now at record rates. In fact, the announcement that came out last night was 5.67% of all car loans are currently in default. And we believe that that is the new canary. I, in fact, I'm positive that that is the new canary in the mine shaft. People will miss their car payment before they'll miss their home payment or rent to payment type thing. And so, like I said, 5.67%, that's a huge number. That's, uh, it was only exceeded in the last 100 years by a brief period of time in 2008 when we were a little over 6%, but this number is just starting to ramp up. I think you're gonna see over 10% of cars get repoed. In fact, for those of you who have a you know kid coming up and you wanna steer them towards a good career, uh, repossessions are gonna pay huge dollars going forward, I say over the next two to three years. Guys who are uh, not afraid of going out there and essentially stealing back a car in the middle of the night will get big dollars because there's gonna be a huge amount of, there are more cars than there are houses and when you talk 5% of a 200 to $300 million number, that's 10, 20, $30 million, 10 or 10 to 30 million cars that will get repoed over the next couple of years. So that's a huge, huge business. But 
once again, that is really the canary in the mine shaft for the housing business. So we expect, uh, and we've seen these numbers increase dramatically for people in default who've been missing their payments on the homes. Uh, renters have refused to pay these high rates and in some cases are protesting, not making payments. But we are going to see an increase in the number of foreclosures, I think, as a result of, uh, because of, and in, and in addition to people missing their rent payments, uh, I'm sorry, their, their, house, their car payments, whether they're leasing a car or making a payment on a car that they bought, they're getting, you know, skiddy, uh, skittish and they can't afford these things anymore. And the next thing to go will be the houses. So expect, you know, the, the housing thing it lags. In other words, the default rates lag the general economy. So the economy is bad up here and the default rates down here. Then the economy starts going the other way and defaults just keep going up on houses. It's because it takes a long time for those things to catch up. So you've got a situation where you're going to see a lot of homes in default uh, later this year and next year, even into 2025. I project that's going to create a tremendous opportunity for those of you who do transactional engineering like we do. And uh, there's lots of opportunities, uh, you know, to help those people and help yourself at the same time. So just stay up with the training that we give you guys and make sure you focus on that market or at least be aware of it because it is going to happen. The canary in the mine shaft is already here. So this is what this is what we call the other shoe drop here. Anyway, that's it for news you can use for today. Okay, thank you for watching. If you get a minute, I would love to hear your comments about what you think of these videos. Feel free also to put in any topics down here in the comment section of things that you'd like to hear me discuss. Any questions you want, go ahead and put in here. We'll make sure we get a video on it when we get time. And as always, please like and subscribe. Hit that ring the bell button as well to get notified every time there is a new video. Thanks a lot, everybody.